If you'd like to jump into PCB design using the MentorPaths suite of software, but you're not quite sure how to begin, maybe this video can help you get started. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore how to lay out a board design and see how you can eventually get to the final stage for manufacturing. For this demonstration, you will see how to use PADS Layout and PADS Router, both version VX 2.5. Let's get started. Step 1. Open PADS Layout and create a new project. Step 2. Add components from libraries. To do this, you need to engage the Eco Toolbar and then search for the Add Component. Now you can access all the libraries and use the asterisk to search for different part types. In this case, you can see a quarter watt resistor is being selected. Next is a capacitor. And next up is a single inline package or SIP. And four pins is selected there. Once you've added all the components in your design, Step three is arrange those components near the origin. The origin should be in the bottom left of your design, and that tells the PCB machine the zero zero location for when it starts to print your design. In this example, there is a DB15 connector and a couple of SIPs, and they're going to be arranged around that DB15 connector. You can rotate a part by clicking Control R on your keyboard. And you can select all the components at once and move them together. The PCB lab at Seneca won't print this silk screen. But sometimes it's still nice to alter the visible text for your reference. To do that, you can select documentation and click on the reference designators and rotate them and move them around. And you can also change their properties so that they are no longer showing. In this case, you can add a 2D element of text on the silkscreen layer. And put it near whatever part you're interested in labeling. After all the parts are spread out on the board. Next, you want to create the board outline from the origin point. And doing this allows the PCB machine to know the boundaries of your board and to cut it out. You can change it to a rectangle or you can draw it out as a polygon. You can also make shape changes like circles and chamfers. In step six, we'll add connections between the pads that will later turn into traces. These are called nets. To add a net, while you're in layout, you click on the eco toolbar and then click on add connection. And you can click each on the pads that you want to connect and it will daisy chain. So to end it, you just click escape. On the right hand side, you'll see all the ground connections are going to get connected. 
and then to end it, you just click Escape. And you can do that with all of the devices on your board. For each new connection that's made, a new netlist is created in the left-hand Project Explorer. Step seven is to change the design rules to have better clearance between objects on your board, including the traces and the pads. So you'll open up design rules and click default, then clearance, and it pops open this matrix. You can change all of them at once, and you want to make sure to change the minimum and the recommended trace width. Then click close and close to accept. In step eight, we'll change the pad stacks and change the sizes of the pads so that they're easier to solder. To do that, you can go to setup pad stacks and for each of the decal names, you're going to go through and change the mounted side and the opposite side diameter. Check that they don't have a second pin. The pin could be a different shape and it counts as a separate thing to change. When you change to another decal name, you'll have to click yes to accept the changes. So the first two items here, we've changed SIP 8P and SIP 4P for both the mounted side and the opposite side and for all the pins, as well as the one pin that's square. When you go into the DB15 connector, we can change the mounted side and the opposite side for the all pins, but you'll notice when you click on pin 16 and 17 that are tied together, those are the mounting hole brackets. So we're gonna leave it at 120. We don't need to change the diameter of the pad. And if we have any mounting holes on the board, for example, if we want to put in a standoff, we can use a 1P SIP and change it to a drill size of 120, for example, which should be able to fit an M3 screw. Once you click OK, your board design will update. For step nine, I want to find the net number for my ground net. Then I'm going to save it and sync it over to router. To do this, I'm first going to select nets and figure out which one is highlighted when I click on ground. And that's number two. So I'll save the design. And you can either click the save button or save as. Make sure nothing in the design is selected. So you can just click on one of those Project Explorer items and then click the router synchronize button. After synchronizing, pads router will open. And the first thing we're going to do in router is to disconnect the ground net. To do this, we'll go over to net objects and click on nets. Remember ground was net number two you can highlight that. Right click on it to pull up the properties. Under the layer biasing tab, we can deselect allow routing for the top and the bottom and then click OK. Rather than create a trace for ground, we're going to do something special with it and attach it to the copper plane on both sides of the board. Suppose you only want to use a single-sided PCB and print the design on the bottom layer only. While you're in router, make sure that nothing is selected and then click on Edit, Properties. In this layer biasing, deselect the top and that means you will only allow routing on the bottom of the board. 
In this case, we're going to cancel this because we want to print on both sides in this demonstration. Step 12 will auto root and verify the design. To create the traces automatically, we'll make sure nothing is selected, then click Tools, Auto Root, and Start, and wait for it to finish. It might take a while if it's a complicated design. Once that's done, you can click on Tools and Verify Design to make sure no errors were found. If there are any errors, you can fix them. In step 13, now that we're done with PADS router, we'll save the design and synchronize back to PADS layout. There's the layout button. Router will close and we'll head back to PADS layout to wrap up the design. Notice that the ground pin doesn't have a trace and that's because we're going to attach it to the copper planes. For step 14, in layout, we're going to change the grid snap size to get better resolution. So click on Tools and then Options. Go under the Grids and Snap. And under the one that says Design Grid, change the resolution to 25. Then click OK. For step 15, we are going to create two concentric rectangles using the 2D line just inside the board outline. So there's the outermost one, and then we'll draw one on the inside. And if we select shapes or documentation, we can change the size of that easily. We're just going to make that a little bit bigger, and they're easy to select now. Step 16 will connect the ground to the top plane and then flood it with copper. So we're going to select shapes and select the innermost rectangle, and then right click on that. To pull up the properties. Change it from a type of 2D line to copper plane. The layer is going to be the top layer and we want to assign it to the ground net. And then we click OK. If we right click on that shape, now we can flood it and we'll see that pop up on the screen. Similarly, step 17 will connect the ground to the bottom plane and then flood it. We'll go through the same process, select shape, select the outermost rectangle, right click to get to the properties, change it to a copper plane, change it to the bottom layer, and assign it the net number two. Now when we right click on that, rectangle, we can flood it and it will flood in the bottom color, which is red. So the top layer is blue and the bottom layer is red. Assuming that we're happy with the layout, we are now going to generate the cam files from PADS layout and we'll save it at the end. To create the cam files, Click on File and Cam, and we're going to add a few documents here. So the first one will be Top with Routing Split Plane. Make sure you select the top plane and change the name of the output file to Top. Then click OK. We're going to add the bottom in exactly the same way, except select the bottom layer and change the name to Bottom then click OK. The third one will be the silk screen. This is not printed by the lab, but it's nice to have as a reference. We can just use the top. You can change the name of the file so we know it's the silk screen. 
and click OK. The fourth is going to be the outline of the board. So this is a custom document type. We're going to click on Layers and then select Board Outline, then click OK twice. The last one is the drill file. This tells the machine where to place all the drill holes on the board. We don't need to change the name. We can select them all, change the location to where they're going to be saved. So the cam directory, in this case, you can browse to the folder. and click OK, and then Run. You can close and save your changes. For step 19, you want to make sure that all your design files were created, and you just use your Explorer to figure out where those files are. You've got bottom, drill, outline, the PCB file itself, the silk screen, and the top. There may be some other files there too. You're going to include all of these when you send it to the PCB lab. For Seneca Semit students, now it's time to print your boards. And you can do this for free at the PCB lab. You send them an email and make sure that you've attached all your CAM design files, including the .pcb file as well. Make sure you include your instructor's name, the course code, your name and your student ID, and what the design is for. If you worked with a partner on this board, be sure to include their name and student ID number too. This video was created to help Seneca College students in the School of Electronics and Mechanical Engineering Technology programs. Note, there is also a separate detailed step-by-step -step tutorial taking you from schematic all the way through to CAM file generation, and also includes how to make your own parts and pads. That tutorial is posted on the lin155.core website in Blackboard. Thank you for listening, and good luck with your board designs.